Amanshal Sidana, I'm the Chief Operating Officer at Arista. I've been here a couple of times, uh, met many of you. And I want to talk about uh, networking and uh, the choices our customers have. And we know that uh, there are many companies in this space. We're not the only ones. And some of these companies have been around much longer than us, whether it's uh, the larger networking companies that the world knows of, whether it's companies that have come and gone, uh, whether it's uh, software companies trying to sell on white boxes, there's plenty of competition in this space. And yet, we have over 6,300 customers choosing Arista. So the question is why? And can that be repeated for other customers, whether it's an enterprise or other spaces as well? What do we do at Arista? We build IP-enabled Ethernet switches and solutions for our customers. Yes, we started this with high-speed Ethernet during the era of 10 gig. Today, we are at 400 gig. We're actively working on 800 gig Ethernet as well, which will come to the market in our view around 2023. And there are many use cases that we go after, whether it's in the cloud, whether it's streaming content. Many of these companies use our products, whether it's actual broadcast. And I can proudly tell you that uh, Summer Olympics 2020 has a lot of Arista involved in the production and the output because there's time stamping, there's synchronization needed, there's debuffers needed, there's a controller architecture the media companies have that needs programmability and so on, and we can help them put this entire solution together. Uh, we are being driven around in trucks around the world already by many of these production studios and so on. There's build farms, there's trade plans on financial trading and low latency, and that's why we acquired 7130 Metameco a uh, year and a half ago, and that has come along very well already. You have healthcare, you have banking, you have insurance, you have general enterprise, as well as a sort of data center build out that companies still do on-prem. And we fit all of these use cases at high scale or even a low scale. Why do we do this? Why do people select Arista? Our goal is to provide an amazing operator experience. Almost everything you're going to hear about today is driven by what we believe is important, which is the customer experience. It's about how we build products. It's about we sell products. The SEs, the product management team, how we support our customers is all driven by the customer experience. You've heard in the past about Cloud Vision. You'll hear more about that today as well. Cloud Vision got started with not that, hey, we have to solve some uh, crazy SDN problem. It was simply, how do we automate the day-to-day -day operations? And I still remember we took a collection of cases, including some financial traders calling us at 4 a.m. on a Monday morning saying, last night, I was changing my configuration on the switches, and something didn't work out, so I changed the upstream BGP router. That didn't work, so I changed my PIM policies, and now nothing works. Can you help me? By the way, the market's about to open in a few hours, and if I'm not up and running, I lose a lot of money. You ask them, so what exactly did you do? Can you show me the logs? And the reality is they're nervous, they've forgotten a few things. Those are critical to debug in those five minutes, and you don't have that data. We had a large customer in the retail space that had a major outage. They made headline news. They lost $7 million in one hour. And in retail, in low margins, that's a lot of uh, revenue turnover that was a missed opportunity. And they came to us and said, the Arista switches connected to the billing server crashed. So we apologize for it. We'll look into it and find out what happened. And we debugged. And a day later, we found out that this customer had approximately 500 switches, out of which 498 switches were up and running completely well managed, the inventory was tracked, they were patched, they were up to date with certified code and so on. They forgot two switches that they have purchased from us in 2008, running EOS 1.1. It was not being tracked by the networking team. So they came back to us and said, we apologize, this wasn't your fault, we just forgot about these switches. Can you help us with tools that can track this? And what you'll hear about in Cloud Vision, we have a dashboard that actually tracks this for compliance reasons, for operations reasons. So there's a lot of simplicity that we build in and we provide over here. The last piece here is TAC and customer support. And often, customers think on the enterprise side, Arista has great technology. 
but can you really support me? And unlike any other company in our space, we do not outsource TAC. The TAC call comes straight to Arista. In fact, the average response time, if you call the 800 number from anywhere in the world, 24 by 7, is 18 seconds, where an Arista engineer picks up the phone and responds to the customer. And there's no level 1, level 2, level 3 TAC. The Arista engineer that picks up the phone is a level 3 TAC, fully trained in the most complex needs like RMA or power supply or solve a BGP MPLS problem. That takes care of a lot of the operational issues you run into as well. Lastly, it's the network architecture and how do you make it resilient, so let me cover that as well. Now, over time, Arista has grown in breadth and portfolio. We've gone after several use cases, but for many of our customers in the large enterprise space, even the cloud companies that have large offices and so on, in the end, you're focused on the data center, you're focused on the branch, you're focused on their campus, you're focused on how they interconnect all of this, and then how do they connect that to the cloud. And we've built solutions using EOS in various forms and flavors to go tackle this space. And the customer feedback unanimously has been, this is awesome because I get one OS, whether it's running on a hardware box or running in a VM or a container, all managed by Cloud Vision to solve these needs versus the mixed breed of things they have to deal with to go solve these problems today. Now, data center architectures have evolved as well as we've grown as a company. And in 2008, 2009, when we came out with our leaf spine designs, many people in the networking community, including some other companies, uh, criticized us for not doing the access aggregation and core. And here we are roughly 10 years later, and this is well adopted by everyone. But it's not as easy as simply drawing these lines. It's about how do you operationalize a leaf spine design. There are some customers thinking about segmentation using EVPN. There's a lot of work we've done in this space. But there's simpler issues that come to mind, which is what happens if one link fails? You have to reconverge, and you're black holing traffic during that time and we spend a lot of time on these topics. Uh, our reconvergence, according to our customers, is about one-fifth to one-tenth of our competition, and it comes down to every layer of the stack that you opt optimize to get to that result. It's, there's no single magic that you can turn on together. But these architectures overall have been very resilient. They can be 10 gig, 40 gig, 100 gig as you want to build, and they work for pretty much every use case companies have today. You don't have to build these silos and have separate clusters being managed differently and so on, then you get to the operational aspect. As an example, for our spine, we provide a rolling upgrade. It's a command maintenance mode on the switches. You put a switch into maintenance mode, and it gracefully withdraws itself from the network. You can do the upgrades. You can change line cards, change code, and so on. No maintenance mode. You're back into service, again, without dropping a packet. And then we've automated this either with Cloud Vision or Ansible or other ways where our customers take advantage of this. And for the first time, we have enterprise customers that are not afraid to upgrade. Because as you know, it takes time. Most people are running old code that's three, four, five years old, and there's a reason they don't want to upgrade because generally when they do that, something breaks. And in this way, you have a completely resilient architecture in an eight-way CMP. If you lost one switch, you only lose one-eighth of your bandwidth if you do it without dropping any packets, it's not a big deal, just move on. And we've shown a chassis, but you can build the exact same thing with pizza boxes. It, we have no religion on modular versus fixed in that, in that sense. It really comes down to the scale that which you are building. But there's more to it. With our cloud companies, we've worked really hard to scale this to the next level. And, and you might have seen this from Facebook. We, worked with them um, uh, for several years. This was announced at OCP 2019, where you have the fabric architecture, and in fact, every dot in this diagram is a switch. You have the top of rack switches at the bottom, then there's a fabric layer, then there's a spine layer, then there's a fabric aggregation layer, then that goes to backbone, all ECMP, and many of these are essentially the exact same switch, repeated at multiple layers, and you're effectively running at 256-way ECMP. It's extremely hard to have an outage when you run that architecture, 
but the operational aspects come in. For example, how do you drain a cluster? When was the last time you're browsing Facebook and you're swiping through the photos and you had an outage? You didn't. But Facebook team behind the scenes is constantly upgrading, changing infrastructure without the users knowing about it. That requires all the tooling and the work we do with them. Then there's white boxes. And this topic has been front and center at least since 2013 or so. Um, we've supported various flavors of working with the open white box ecosystem, including some customers running EOS on their white boxes. But why do cloud companies do white boxes? And the general myth is that it's for cost. The reality is when you talk to the largest cloud companies that talk about white boxes, who happen to be our largest customers, they wouldn't be our largest customers if they were only using white boxes, they do it to either get more control to have some secret sauce with respect to integration. And in some cases, they just got fed up of the quality of networking products in the industry at that time and decided to build it on their own. So we've worked closely with these customers and realized that it takes them a lot of effort to build the entire stack. At the same time, we are doing pretty much the exact same job anyway. What they want is a quick integration, some IP, some secret sauce integration, and they can move on. This is not their core business. And they're very happy to partner with us in those ways. There's a second reason they do this, which is it's not a build versus buy. Some, some of these companies are funded very, very well, and if they prioritize and they want to build their own switches, they have enough money to do that. But when they do that, they become single sourced. And as a large, cloud company, you do not want to be single sourced, even if it happens to be an internal team. But if you've customized the product to fit your entire stack mechanically, from a software standpoint, from a security standpoint, how do you buy from the industry? And we addressed that last year when we announced this product with Facebook, which is the Arista 7368, based on Tomahawk 3, and the Facebook mini pack are like for like products, they're interchangeable. One is built by the Facebook team. One is built by Arista. The Arista 7368 can run EOS, but it can also run FBOS. And the Facebook mini pack runs FBOS, but it can also run EOS. And you get that two by two matrix you need in a multi-vendor environment without having to give up on the secret sauce, the extensions, the customization, and without having to give up on schedules. These products were already deployed at high volume by the time the first Tomahawk 3 products showed up in the market. So you get a time to market advantage as well. The reason I bring that up is there is interest in the overall market when you look at the ecosystem, including things like Sonic. We already support Sonic on Arista switches at Microsoft, and we're seeing broader interest for those types of solutions um, for large, I would say, high-tech or more advanced enterprises as well. So cloud networking, I had to summarize the way we look at these segments. Number one, you have the cloud titans, or sometimes even the tier two cloud, deployed at a very large scale. And they have their own needs, not just at the leaf spine, but also DCI, the backbone, the WAN, and so on, and we address a lot of those needs with them. Then you have more a cloud-centric operation which is deployed by financials, large enterprises, and so on, which is the middle tier, and uh, this focus on automation. And if you can't build it yourself, then there's cloud vision for that segment. Lastly, you have the converged fabric. And that's for customers with 20 racks, 30 racks, a backend system, maybe Nutanix, and so on. And you know where I'm going with this. This is sort of a precursor to what you're going to hear from Prashant and team on where Big Switch fits. So this is Arista Cloud Titans, cloud designs, large enterprises, but they need observability and network monitoring. This is where BMF gets integrated with Arista. This is the converged fabric or the BCF type of use cases that continue as well. So we actually have managed to do this and uh, sort of analyze this, integrate this or then the plan 
to avoid conflicts and avoid sort of disruption to any of the customers as well.